is it with all the Medicare parts? It is easy to get confused. The answer is a bit complicated, but no worries. Aspire to Money is here to help on all things related to you and your money. You definitely want to know the information so that you are not in for a rude surprise when you retire. It is critical to know what each part of Medicare covers. Let's quickly review the four parts. Part A is for hospital insurance. Part B is for medical insurance. Part C is for an HMO-like option. Part D is for prescription drugs. On this episode of Aspire to Money, we will focus on Medicare Part D. Again, Medicare Part D covers prescription drugs. The Part D coverage comes from private insurance companies. Part D plans offered by insurance companies vary significantly. However, the federal government sets guidelines on what basic medications these plans must cover and on how much you can be charged. Medicare.gov has an online tool to help you compare plans each year. Coverage. The basic plan must generally cover at least two drugs in each drug class. The basic plan must also provide a list of covered drugs and pharmacy networks. Tip. You must look at the formulary for each plan to make your best choice. What the heck is the formulary? The formulary is the list of covered prescription drugs. Plans cover both generic and brand name drugs. The formulary must include at least two drugs in the most commonly prescribed categories and classes. However, plans can choose which specific drugs they cover. So you want to make sure the formulary covers the prescriptions you are currently taking. Tip, be aware that a Medicare drug plan can make some changes to its drug list during the year if it follows Medicare guidelines. For example, Drug therapies may change, new drugs may be released, or updated medical information can become available that would remove some drugs from the list. If you are impacted by a change during the year, the Medicare Part D drug plan must, one, give you written notice at least 30 days before the effective date of the change, or two, give you written notice at the time you request a refill and provide you with a 30-day supply of the drug you were taking before the change. Tip, please subscribe to the Aspire to Money mailing list for more great money information. Just send an email request to info at aspiretomoney.com. Things to look for. Medicare.gov advises that there are six things to look for when choosing Medicare Part D drug coverage. First, do you take specific drugs? Then look at drug plans that include your drugs and their formulary. Then compare costs. Two, do you want extra protection from high prescription drug costs? Then look at plans offering coverage in the coverage gap, called the donut hole, and then check with those plans to make sure that they cover your drugs in the gap. Three, do you want your drug expenses to be balanced throughout the year? Then look at plans with no or a low deductible or with additional coverage in the donut hole. The donut hole is the lingo for the coverage gap in Part D. Four, do you take a lot of generic prescriptions? Then look at plans with tiers that charge you nothing or low co-payments for generic prescriptions. Five, you may not have many drug costs now, but do you want coverage for peace of mind and to avoid future penalties? then look at plans with a low monthly premium for drug coverage. If you need prescriptions in the future, all plans still must cover most drugs used by people with Medicare. And finally, six, do you like the extra benefits and lower costs available by getting your health care and prescription drug coverage from one plan? If so, are you willing to accept the plan's restrictions on which doctors, hospitals, and other health care providers you can use? then you may wish to look for a Medicare Advantage plan under Medicare Part C that has prescription drug coverage. Tip, Medicare Part C is essentially like an HMO plan. Cost, now on to that critical question. How much does Part D coverage cost? How much you pay for Medicare drug coverage depends on which plan you choose. According to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, most plans charge a monthly premium that averages $33.50. Tip, watch out for this gotcha. 
If you do not sign up for Part D when you are first eligible for Medicare at age 65, you may have to pay a Part D late enrollment penalty. Some people may have to pay an additional fee for Part D coverage. Oh no, what does that mean? Well, if your modified adjusted gross income, as defined by the IRS, is above a certain amount, you may have to pay a Part D fee to the federal government. This extra fee is called the Part D Income-Related Monthly Adjustment Amount. Tip, Medicare uses the modified adjusted gross income you reported on your IRS tax return from two years ago. To simplify greatly, modified adjusted gross income is your money from all sources, less certain allowable deductions, but not the standard or itemized deductions or any other exemptions, but tax-exempt interest is added back in. Tip, this concept of an additional charge based on modified adjusted income also applies to Part B Medicare coverage as well. Let's look at the 2019 chart to understand the extra fee by income categories. If your filing status and yearly income in 2017 were figured on a single head of household widowed basis for filing status, this additional fee kicks in at $85,000. For married filing jointly, the additional fee kicks in at $170,000. Additional fees accrue for higher income categories, as shown in the chart. I hope this whirlwind tour of Medicare Part D coverage was helpful to you. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Aspire to Money channel.